Let's be sure that we pass comprehensive immigration reform so it's time to help them have a chance to get out of the shadows and have the opportunity for the future. The Trump administration will also secure and defend the borders of the United States. And yes, we will build a wall. Election day is two days away. No doubt you've heard the back and forth between the candidates on immigration. That's where we focus our Fox 5 News special, The Border. I'm Christine Medella. Fox 5 traveled to the U.S.-Mexico border to show you the many sides of the issue and how what goes on there affects us here at home. As you'll learn, the border battle isn't a new one. Manifest Destiny drove American soldiers into battle. When the Mexican-American War came to an end, border lines were drawn. Congress authorized mounted inspectors to man that border. Prohibition, no supply, high demand. Alcohol was contraband. It came across the border from Mexico. Wartime industries absorbed American workers. Farmers were desperate. The Bracero, or labor program, was born. More than five million Mexicans came to the U.S. as low-paid contract workers. Hundreds of thousands stayed. President Dwight Eisenhower launched a program to deport undocumented Mexican immigrants. The official name? Operation Wetback. Rather than making them, or talking about putting up a fence, why don't we work out some recognition of our mutual problems, make it possible for them to come here legally with a work permit, and then while they're working and earning here, they pay taxes here. I'd like to see something done about the illegal alien problem that would be so sensitive and so understanding about labor needs and human needs that that problem wouldn't come up. These are good people, strong people. Part of my family is a Mexican. The number of undocumented immigrants skyrocketed. It is true our borders are out of control. It is also true that this has been a situation on our borders back through a number of administrations. I believe in the idea of amnesty for those who have put down roots and who have lived here even though some time back uh, they, they may have entered illegally. exposed weaknesses on the southern border and gave rise to the Department of Homeland Security. This problem has been growing for decades and past efforts to address it has failed. People are coming to work and many of them have no lawful way to come to America and so they're sneaking in. Today our immigration system is broken and everybody knows it. Even as we are a nation of immigrants, we're also a nation of laws. Undocumented workers broke our immigration laws, and I believe that they must be held accountable. If we have comprehensive immigration reform, we should have a path to citizenship. If it weren't for me, you wouldn't even be talking about illegal immigration. We need to build a wall. Welcome to the Sonoran Desert. This is beautiful. You can see how remote it is and how open. Robert Crooks lives in Las Vegas, but it's here where he and other self-proclaimed patriots found their passion, their purpose. I've been doing this for 10 years. For 10 years, I've been on the border screaming, somebody look at this problem. Throughout the years, that one problem ate at them. These illegals come across there. Nagged them. We've got to stop this endemic narcotics trafficking. I mean, it's killing our kids. It's killing our country. It's the tie that binds their common goal. Priority one, secure the border. I love my country. I just want, to, I want our, the country to be our country. Uh, it's a country of laws, and, and the laws should be obeyed. If uh, That's why I'm here. They're frustrated. They're taking jobs away from us. Angry. You know, this is our country now. 
not theirs. Motivated. Everyone says, well, why doesn't someone do something? Well, why don't you do something? Why? We can all do something. I want to see our country remain the United States. You start erasing borders, we surrender sovereignty. We packed up and traveled with Robert to meet his compatriots. When we got there, we set up camp about 60 miles north of the U.S.-Mexico border in the vast desert that looked barren, isolated, and miles from anything or anyone. And rather than solve or attempt to solve our border and smuggling problems, uh, the federal government decided we'll just put some warning signs up out here. The Bureau of Land Management's website for the Sonoran Desert National Monument boasts the most biologically diverse of the North American deserts. There is also a warning. Visitors should be aware that narcotic smuggling activities occur within the monument. If you see any activity that looks illegal, do not intervene. Call 911. Then it warns, cell phone service is often out of range. This place is very spooky. Very, very spooky. It's fair, there ain't no 7-Elevens, there ain't no, 911 don't work out here. <laughs> so where we are now, there's cartel members around? They're watching us now. Keep your eye towards that south side there. Careful, careful. For years, the county sheriff has called for stricter laws to slow drug smuggling. Nobody wants to talk about it. This is the war, this is the war in America that nobody wants to talk about. That's why they're armed. You're coming out here, you're gonna need this and more. I've been shot at uh, 24 times in the past 23 months. But I shoot back. Out here is a wild, wild west. People don't realize it. How many times have you actually gotten into gun battles? Twice. Scary? Oh, indeed. Because <laughs> you're exposed up on that mountainside. Drug smugglers, not undocumented workers, are the Mountain Minutemen and Border Protectors' main focus. We only fight the heroin cartel. This is international narcotics trafficking. You get that through your head. The dope that's coming across, it's not a little bag of weed. These are 20 pound blocks of pure heroin, 20 pounds of pure crystal meth, or per cocaine. Our camp was in the same area sheriff's deputies have arrested 21 smugglers with two-way radios and more than 1,500 pounds of marijuana in one day. We hiked the mountains overlooking the valley. We found shoes, blankets, backpacks. Some hats, some rope. Evidence people had been there. Those people, Robert claims, are drug traffickers. Binocular case, that ought to tell you something. They got the binoculars, but they left the case. They sit up here and watch the roads. These people have probably carried a pack for hundreds of miles through adverse weather and extreme temperatures to get this far. This is endemic of the drug smugglers. Their booties, the smuggler booties. Cut it, lace it, and wear these. And you just slip, uh, slip it over their shoes and across the border. So their footprints don't leave tracks. Oh, those are used for water, yes. A rope connecting the two, so maybe like carrying over. Yes. They may have to carry several. And I believe that the, the traffic is being controlled from up here. High pointed from this position here, they can control. I mean, you look down, there's Border Patrol truck, you can see it. Most of the suspects are Mexican nationals. Some American suspects admit to accepting money to pick up drugs from a drop site along Interstate 8. Interstate 8 is a transportation system, and it allows uh, illegal products such as narcotics to be transported all across the United States in a matter of two or three days. Everything south of Interstate 8, a lot of the time is controlled by the drug cartels and not the United States of America. That's my issue. This is our country. That battle, that turf war is what they're fighting while migrants face another battle. When we come back, we'll introduce you to them. Welcome back to our Fox 5 News special, The Border. After two days in the Sonoran Desert, we traveled to Nogales, Arizona to see the U.S.-Mexico border for ourselves. <laughs> About 20,000 people live in the border city of Nogales, Arizona. 
More than 200,000 live on the other side of this 20-foot fence in Nogales, Sonora, Mexico. We followed the fence. It continued for six miles of harsh, rugged terrain. Then this, a shorter barrier to prevent cattle crossing. Border Patrol agents, cameras, and radar pick up where the fence left off. Father Sean Carroll is a Catholic priest who works with migrants on both sides of this fence. Today we're going to visit one of our humanitarian projects. Uh, Ring calls it the Comedor, which is Spanish for soup kitchen. To get there, we have to pass through here, one of the legal ports of entry manned by Customs and Border Protection officers. Here at the Dickinson Port of Entry, I mean, we enforce customs law, immigration law, agriculture law, state and local laws. Drivers and pedestrians coming into the U.S. are greeted by officers, thank you, canines, and cameras. I'm gonna put in the X-ray right now. At every 30 seconds, you don't know what, what's 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 gonna be in front of you. We screen the 99.9% .9 of traffic is legitimate travel. It's that 1% or 0.1% that we're looking for that are violating immigration law, customs laws, or any other laws. Yeah, he went under and uh, just wanted to get a check. Does it look like it's been off? There's fingerprints all over it. Yeah. yeah see, you see like the fingerprints underneath there? While we were there, a canine sniffed out these drugs hidden in a car. Today we already had one seizure of uh, methamphetamines being smuggled into the United States. And that's not uncommon here? Uh, that uh, happens every day. You see the alert, the change of behavior? He starts like moving his head, uh, tracing the order, and then he goes, finds, finds the source, and then sits. We see a lot of things here at the port, uh, from narcotics being smuggled in uh, small compartments on vehicles, on people. We've seen people being smuggled in cars. Why? Uh, they all want to come to the United States, whatever, uh, by ever, whatever means necessary. I'd say we see three main reasons that people come north to the border and to try to enter the United States. So one is economic need. And the majority of the people we see here have migrated because literally they can't provide a dignified way of life for their families. There was no future in Mexico. There was no future for their children, for us. Another reason is family separation. So a number of the people we serve have family in the U.S. They have children, they have spouses, parents, and they have no legal way to be with them. There's families being ripped apart. And then the other is, is violence, and we've been seeing more people over the years fleeing violence. They cross the border, they cross uh, the desert for a long time, and with the baby in hand, and, you know, carrying my, my younger sister. In the mid-90s, Ruby Martinez's parents decided to take the risk. I'm still undocumented. My parents are undocumented. Ruby lives in southwest Las Vegas now, but was born in southwest Mexico. They left everything. They, they, ha they came here. They had no family. Um, they left my sister and I. They left their children behind to come here and, and to have a better future and to give us a better future. Once her parents earned enough money, they'd send for Ruby and her sister. I do remember when my mom, um, the last night when they were about to come here, they were packing in. And they just said, take care of your sister. Ruby was seven years old. I was a little bit angry at the fact that they left. And they left without really telling me that they were leaving to the States. And I do remember that. Months later, Ruby and her sister flew into LAX. We just traveled with someone, a stranger. A stranger, I did not know the person. I think there's a lack of awareness as well of how difficult it is to come legally. I think for, for many people in the situations I described, there is no legal path for them. And I, I would venture to say if you spoke to most of the people here today and you asked them, if you had a legal way, would you take it? They would raise their hands. People want to do things the right way. Definitely. My parents would love to, you know, um, be citizens. I would love to be a citizen. I have people asking me, well, how come you don't apply? It's not that easy. Pero no se puede. Ahorita ya es muy difícil. Y es triste. Tener una familia, estar divididos. Nada más el teléfono que tenemos de por medio.
porque me acuerdo de injusticias que le hacen a uno. Ahora, si uno fuera malo, yo no pisara de vuelta y ni viniera. Me daría vergüenza con la sociedad, pero sí, sí, este, sí, sí nos enseñaron a hacer siquiera el respeto a, a las personas, que no es como ellos dicen, o sea, ellos están equivocados. Necesitamos apoyo, necesitamos que nos creen, pero no nos creen nada. Somos que no valemos nada por un papel. Es triste. We met Andres Mariano Cruz at Father Sean's soup kitchen. He lived in Los Angeles for 37 years. Then he was deported and couldn't say goodbye to his family. Agents dropped him off in Nogales, about 2,000 miles from his hometown of Chiapas. Some people can't, can't understand, you know, but if you just think about your own family, you put yourself in, in you know, that situation, you know, imagine your, your father just take, is being taken away and you can't see him anymore. We're at the intersection of life and death for many of these people and, and they've come out of desperation and uh, the experience of deportation is so traumatic because many have gone into serious debt, they've sold everything to come, they have this great hope of being reunited with children and with parents and family members and that dream is seemingly dashed. Una palabra no dice nada y al mismo tiempo lo esconde todo igual que el viento que esconde el agua como las flores que esconde el lodo the solution? A border wall, mass deportations, a path to citizenship? We'll try to get those answers when we come back. Throughout our Fox 5 News special, we showed you the history of immigration in this country. We took you to the U.S.-Mexico border. We introduced you to Southern Nevadans who illustrated problems with our current system. So what's the solution? There's many opinions, but no easy answer. This fence in Nogales, Arizona is just one small part of the roughly 2,000 mile border separating the United States and Mexico. It's a physical barrier to prevent people from crossing here, but some still do. Others sneak in through the legal ports of entry. Customs and Border Protection man the ports of entry. Everything in between the ports of entry is patrolled by uh, Border Patrol. Those agents watch this tall fence, this short one, sometimes no fence, through cities, desert, mountains, farmland. But not all the undocumented workers in the U.S. made it here by escaping an agent's watchful eye. A Pew Research Center report estimated nearly half of the unauthorized migrants originally came in legally, but then overstayed their visas. How is this ever going to stop? <laughs> That's a tough question. Um, there's always going to be people wanting to come to the United States. Illegal immigration is a controversial campaign topic. That's why Border Patrol and Customs and Border Protection agents were given strict instructions not to speak out publicly, not to take a side when talking to me. Does there need to be more security along the southern border? Does there need to be a wall? That I can't comment on. Off camera, I talk to agents and officers throughout our travels. They, like everyone else, say the issue is complicated. They told me construction crews can't even get to some rugged and remote areas of the border to build a large wall. Some parts of the border run through private land. And whenever there's a physical barrier, they told me people find a way around it. No están unas reglas muy bien para que uno recibe todo ese castigo para uno. Porque uno lo que lleva es sus manos a trabajar. No somos criminales, como dicen, no somos pandilleros. I don't think it's feasible, no. And not only is it not feasible, I don't think it gets at the root cause of this issue. Father Sean Carroll works with migrants on both sides of the border. You can build a high wall, you can build it as, as long as the border is, and yet if you don't address fundamental issues of economic need 
and family separation and generalized violence, then it's going to not be a very effective solution to this issue. Can we afford the mass deportations of millions of people? Why, yeah, sure. Our children in America today do not have a chance to prosper economically, socially, because of the endemic illegal immigration. I don't think a person would, is going to wake up one morning and say, I'm going to go across the desert, risk a lot of things, you know, risk my life, just because I, I want to do that. Circumstances just push you to do that. that every day, it's, we always have an immigration violation. Every single day. So people will always try. And no end in sight. <laughs> I don't see. It's a strength and a struggle, the human will. Often stronger than the struggles we face. Will to save a country. You just have to have the want. The want to try to help. The want to try to save America. A family. It's one of the things that gets me um, going every day. You know, because I know I can't fail them. I can't not try my best because they tried, they, they tried everything to provide me with a better future. So the very least I can do is honor that and strive for, to be the best. We do understand and we are compassionate, but um, we still have our job to do in enforcing the, the laws here in the United States. I am an American. Without papers right now, I am an American. I was, I was raised here. This is my home. Don't be afraid of the numbers, you know, that, uh, to see them as people. We're securing the border. America. America. These men volunteer their time and spend their own money to fight for what they believe in, in hopes of a better future for their families. Ruby and her parents risked their lives, fought to get into this country, in hopes of a better future for theirs. I love my country. We love this country. The Mountain Minutemen have been patrolling the desert for 10 years. They tell us that last trip with us was their last border operation. Ruby Martinez is still undocumented, but she is working legally through the DACA immigration policy. One thing they both agree on, they encourage everyone to vote. You can join the conversation. We're live on the Fox 5 Facebook page right now to answer any questions. I'm Christine Medella. Thanks for watching our Fox 5 News special, The Border.